Good evening. Tonight's Committee of Adjustment hearing is being held by video conference on live streaming video on the town's live stream webpage at oakville.ca. This is a hearing to consider applications for minor variance and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act. Please keep in mind the intent of this process is to review the application that is before the committee, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. The process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the application, the applicant or authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and efficient electronic hearing, we have adopted the following process. If you are watching the live stream of this hearing on oakville.ca, and if you wish to speak to an item on the agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. It will also be displayed below the screen at the live stream of oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call. And when you do call in, staff will take your name, an item that you wish to address, and your telephone number and further instructions will be provided for you to join the video conference. When the chair of the committee polls for interested parties, you'll have to press star six to unmute yourself. The applicant or agent will then be given an opportunity to brief ex briefly explain the commit to the committee the basis of their application, answer any questions that may arise. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for a presentation. You will state your full name and address for the record and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must also state their full name and address for the record and a maximum of five minutes will be provided for each presentation. All remarks and questions will be directed to the chair and submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. The applicant or agent will then be granted a further five minutes to respond to any comments made by interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the applicant or agent has concerns found in staff report, particularly with any proposed conditions, this will be the opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for a decision and that will mark all the end of discussions. Any person desiring a notice of the decision of an application must provide a written request, preferably through email to the secretary treasurer. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days for minor variances and 15 for consent applications. To the applicant and agent and any other person who has filed a written request for such notice. The last day of the appeal to the of the decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal will be noted on the decision. Only the applicant and specified persons or public bodies may appeal the committee's decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal. In November of 2022, Bill 23 legislation, the More Homes Build Faster Act, amended the Planning Act to remove appeal rights for members of the public. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding, and the Secretary Treasurer will then notify the applicant and anyone who has received a copy of the decision through written correspondence. People participating in this hearing are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and any other person who is participating in the electronic hearing. Tonight's electronic hearing is being video recorded and available for future viewing at oakville.ca. Thank you. We have uh, no regrets this evening. Do I have any procuring interests to be declared? I see none, thank you. Okay, Madam Secretary Treasurer, I will be taking um, any requests for deferral or withdrawal of applications. If you are in the um, meeting um, and you wish to withdraw or defer an application, please raise your hand and the Secretary Treasurer will invite you to speak. Once again, the phone number to call is 905-815-6095. I've moved uh, Thomas Goral into the meeting. Mr. Goral, go ahead. Uh, good morning, Chair and Committee members. I'm the applicant for 1089 Melvin Avenue. And uh, due to the comments from uh, planning staff, we'd like to defer. Perfect, thank you. Um, Members, all those in support of deferral, for the applicant to work back with staff. 
Okay, the application has been deferred, none opposed. You'll see the secretary treasurer at your earliest convenience. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Okay, I've moved Simon Alahi into the move into the meeting. Hello. Good evening, can, Mr. Alahi. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, we have. Uh, we don't have any deferral request. We have a meeting, and uh, once our turn is over there, we will present our case. Oh, okay. So you just had your hand up uh, by mistake, I guess. Uh, no, actually, I just want to confirm that uh, the video and the audio is uh, okay, so that we will be hearing it uh, loudly and clear. Okay. Yes, we are heard loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else, Madam Secretary Treasurer? I don't see anyone at this time. Okay, we'll start with the uh, first item on our agenda, and that is CAV 159 of 2023 at 326 Sandhurst Drive. Again, that's CAV 159 of 2023 at 326 Sandhurst Drive. I have two letters of support on a record from Mr. Alfie Hanna and Mr. Justin Foxcroft. I've moved Paul Demchek into the meeting. Very well. Good evening, Mr. Jemsek. Go ahead, sir. Uh, good evening, members of the committee. Um, my name is Paul Demchek uh, with the Tory Planning and Management. I have prepared a very brief presentation uh, for this evening's meeting. And I see it up on the screen. Thank you very much for that. Um, so I'm the planning consultant, I'm planning consultant sorry, on behalf of the applicant for 326 Sandhurst Drive. And the application uh, that I'm about to uh, briefly present tonight does have a bit of a history. So I would like to take a, a brief moment to um, address this and go through the proposed development. Um, and for the benefit of the committee and the public, um, um, just would like to go through just how we got to where we are today. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so the subject property at 326 Sanders Drive is currently under construction uh, with a new single detached dwelling. And this is an image of the current state of the construction on the property just taken from a couple of days ago. Uh, you can see that the windows are in now. The roof is installed and the homeowner is looking to have the building um, wrapped, ideally in time for winter. Uh, next slide, please. So the application pursues the approval of two minor variances that would facilitate a minor modification to the rear of the existing dwelling that's under construction. And the two variances are for an increase in lot coverage and floor area ratio. Both of these variances uh, were previously considered by the committee. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a site plan of the existing dwelling, which is outlined essentially in, in, in the uh, darker black line. And it also highlights the proposed minor addition at the rear of the dwelling, which is also bubbled in red and then further highlights um, a previous variance that was approved by the committee for the rear yard patio at the time. Um, so I'll just take a moment and describe um, each of these individual variances and the history of, of each of them. So originally on January, sorry, July 27th, 2021, the committee approved um, a variance to the floor area ratio of 39.2% for the, I'll call it the main dwelling. On February 22nd, 2023, the committee approved a modification to the dwelling for an increase in lot coverage, which included the rear yard patio, which is highlighted in yellow at the rear of the dwelling. And then finally, this now leads us to where we are today. So the dwelling is currently under construction. The client has, for lack of a better term, wrestled with some internal space, space planning challenges uh, for his family, and in particular with the family room for the dwelling. So what's being proposed tonight is a uh, modest expansion of the family room uh, being located uh, right at the rear uh, corner of the dwelling. And it's in a location where a previous uh, window well was intended below grade. So this provides for a modest uh, two-story addition to the dwelling. 
And it, the design includes similar window placements and treatment to the previous application and further includes an open to below interior programming on the second floor to ensure that um, overlook impacts are mitigated. I'll show those slides in, in a brief moment. I would like to note just finally on this slide, the proposed addition to the family room at the rear of the dwelling is, um, is obviously not visible from the streetscape. It's separated by a uh, 5.31 meter setback from the property to the west, which is just on the top of the page. And it's further uh, designed with an identical setback as the existing setback for the rear wall of the dwelling, and obviously a greater sideback than what is permitted in the, in the zoning bylaw. Uh, next slide, please. So I've prepared a few um, just comparative slides of the previous elevations that were approved by the committee to just demonstrate the intent of the design change. So this is the rear elevation comparison. So the image at the top of the slide shows the previous location of the window well. And you can see there, it's, um, you can kind of see some of the, um, the, intended, um, the intended design of that. And then the image at the bottom shows the proposed expansion to the family room. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the side elevation comparison. So a similar window placement um, obviously is proposed to what was originally designed. And as I previously mentioned, the second floor is um, designed as open to below. Uh, so it's essentially like a large cathedral ceiling in the family room. So the windows are only intended for internal natural light and no privacy impacts are, are created. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is the front elevation comparison. So again, the modifications to the family room do not have any impact on the streetscape and the proposed uh, changes and slight increase to the previously approved variances will not create any negative massing impacts from, from my perspective. Again, this is an identical dwelling from a streetscape perspective um, that was approved by the committee previously. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I just I would like to take a, just a quick moment just to state that I completely recognize that this is, um, just to be frank, not an ideal scenario to be back in front of the committee on numerous occasions. Um, my client has made an effort to keep the neighbors apprised of the modifications to the dwelling throughout the entirety of the process. Um, we've received letters of support from the abutting neighbors. I will note that Oakville planning staff um, have noted their support of the proposal. And I would submit to the committee that the proposed application meets the forecast of the Planning Act. Um, the development fits within the streetscape and context of the neighborhood. Um, that concludes the presentation. Um, and before the committee would be happy to assist and answer any questions. Thank you very much. Any questions or items of clarification? Go ahead, Mr. Tosky. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Demchuk, I do have to ask you, are we going to see you back again? Because you started with um, what was a small single variance then you came back and added to it and now you're adding to it again and I feel I have to assess this as if this was the first application and not the incremental change and uh, I, I don't have a lot of confidence that this is it and that this is the same application that was before the committee in the first place it's a, uh, th sorry, through you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, it's a very fair question, um, Member Tolesky. Um, this, is, this is the first time in my career I think I've ever been before the committee on a third occasion on any application. It's not the typical way that obviously um, I would ever like to conduct myself from, a, from an application perspective. Um, obviously, the dwelling is pretty substantially advanced um, in terms of its um, in terms of its construction. So, where the location of the window well is, there's obviously um, a foundation wall that was installed for that window well, and my client would have to go back and do a minor modification to the building permit process if the committee obviously sees this as minor to proceed. Um, from my perspective, yes, this is the the last request that you will see from me on this application. Thank you. Any further questions or items of clarification? Okay, I see none. Has anyone called in 
with interest for this application, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Has anyone no raised their reason. hand for this application? There, there is no one at this time. Okay, um, we'll take the matter into committee and uh, start the ball rolling. Who would like to start the discussion? I'll give you a minute. Okay, Mr. Talowski, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll, I'll break the silence. Uh, Madam Chair, I have, I have difficulty with this. Um, I don't think I would have supported this application the first time. I don't believe I was at the second meeting. Um, if it was all this, I think the committee would have asked the applicant to go back and redesign the house and try to make it comply um, with the character of the neighborhood, minimize the impact of the extra size that's being asked for. But we can't do that now because the house is essentially built and we just keep adding incrementally. And I, I can't deal with the incremental variances one at a time. I need to look at it as a whole. Uh, I recognize there are two letters of support, but uh, to start this discussion, Madam Chair, I'm gonna recommend the application be denied. I don't think it meets the intent of the uh, official plan uh, bylaw, nor do I think it's desirable. Okay. Uh, is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay. Mr. Hardcastle. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm likewise very much struggling with this. I recall um, where Mr. Tolowski was not present at the second. Uh, I recall the second variance before us. And I recall struggling myself at that time, um, thinking about the incrementalism. Um, and uh, I, I likewise to Mr. Tolowski, I, 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 I think I would struggle. I, I know I, I'm struggling with what is before us today. And if this came before us as a singular package, um, I certainly uh, would agree with Mr. Flowski's comments. So I'm, I'm actually going to support the uh, motion on the floor. Okay, very well. Any further discussion? Okay, I see none. The motion is to deny the application as it doesn't meet the four tests of uh, the planning act. Please, uh, all those in support. Okay, uh, all those opposed? None opposed. Uh, the application has been denied. All right, Mr. Demchuk, have a good evening. Thank you very much. Application CAV 160 of 2023 at 1385 Ripplewood Avenue. Again, it's CAV 160 of 2023 at 1385 Ripplewood Avenue.
If there's anyone with interest in this application, please call 905-815-6095. I have a Mr. Haron Hossein as the agent. Um, if you would like to um, be moved into the meeting to speak to this application, please raise your hand so I can move you into the meeting. I'm moving um, Saeed Haron Hussein into the meeting. Mr. Hussein, if you're with us, please turn your microphone on and your camera on. Uh, good evening, Chair and respected uh, Chair members. Good evening. We have I'm, the, I'm, I'm the applicant for the uh, property address 1385 Ripplewood Avenue. Uh, basically, we have applied for the variance for the it just uh, for the minor setback uh, on the rear yard for the stairs accessing the main dwelling unit, which is encroaching the uh, minimum setback. So it's basically the staircase, which is into the uh, severe setback. The staircase is? Leading to the basement. OK. Um, if this is your presentation, that's fine. We can pull out of uh, the uh, uh, site plan. Thank you. Are there any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Hussain at this time? I see none. No. If there's anyone with interest in the application and has called in or is interested to speak, please raise your hand. I see no one at this time. Okay. Very well. Uh, let's take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Dickey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Based upon my review of the owner's application, the site plan, and my site visit, together with the planning staff's report, and in fact, there's no letters of objection or anything from the neighbors. It is my opinion that the variance is minor and conforms to the tests under the Planning Act. And I would like to make a motion that I'd like to put forth a motion that the application be approved subject to the conditions that the uncovered stairs below grade accessing the main building be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated October 3rd. 2023 and the elevation drawing dated May 12, 2022, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if the building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Dick. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in support. The application has been approved, none opposed. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Okay. Application CAV. 091 of 2023 at 2245 Yolanda Drive. And that, this application was deferred from July the 12th. Again, that's CAV 091 of 2023 at 2245 Yolanda Drive. I have, okay, 32 letters of opposition or emails uh, the on record. Please bear with me while I read them all uh, into record. I have requests to attend from three individuals, a and W Socorro, a Rob Becker, and a Nancy Orten Gunberg. If you're interested in attending this meeting and you have something to say, 
please call 905-815-6095. Uh, staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions. I have six letters of support from a Eugenio Ruiz uh, and uh, Rocio Salazar, Latha Dabir and Krishnan Dabir, Amy Atelli Arjun, Ling Liu, Gatham Madierta, and Venkat. I have 32 letters of opposition uh, from Nancy Ortenbert, Edward and Donna Cooper, Paul Petrelli, Kevin and Leanne Swalwell, Richard and Susan Kazlak, Brian O'Connor, Harold and Judy Devine, Aldo Martellacci, Robert Becker, Ed, um, Adnan and Mikhail, oh, sorry, Tracy, um, Ivan and Nada Lizjak, Patrick Hensi, Jessica Foran and Wajat Mahmoud, Cindy Roberts, Vicky and Craig Perry, Kenneth and Mary McLean, Leslie and Brad Hugo, Alka Sood, Amit Gupta, Maya Gupta, Jamie and Colin Makey, Brian Martin and Isabel Vocia, Agatha and Vocic Sikora, Colleen Daughtry, Brian Sheehan, Heather Taylor, Maurice Curran, Rita Allen and Debbie Allen, Debbie and Ian Last, Emma Murphy and Todd Johnston, Barbara Keeley Watt, Dinaz Nijamwala, Rico Salazar and Eugene Ruiz. Uh, okay, I may have misspoken. These ones were supposed to be on the support side, and I'm not sure now if they've submitted both an opposition or. Okay. In any event, um, I'm just going to make a general comment with 32 uh, neighbors in opposition. I expect that several of them will want to speak. I would ask that everyone um, condenses their comments so that we are not repeating the same points over and over again in the interest of time. Uh, we are happy to hear everyone who would like to speak. Um, I just ask that everyone um, keeps their comments concise and to the point and without much repetition. I have Mr. Matthew Fratikangeli uh, as the agent. If he'd like to raise his hand so I can move him into the meeting, please. This is for CAV 091 of 2023 at 2245 Yolanda Drive. Okay, the agent has been moved into the meeting. Yes, good evening, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Can you please try to turn your camera on? Yes, there we are. Very well. Okay. Um, yes, hi, Madam Chair. I, I did uh, present, uh, provide a presentation. Um, it is uh, a bit longer than five minutes, and considering all the uh, neighbor comments, I would request an extra few minutes. If not, I understand, and I can try my best to condense this, but uh, given all the opposition, I, I would appreciate the extra time to try and address the neighbor comments. Very well. Go ahead, Mr. Fratanchelli. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some leeway. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. So this is a presentation, as you know, for 2245 Yolanda. I'm Matthew Fratanchelli's authorized agent. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, so a bit of project history, as you know, we've been deferred from July 12th, hearing multiple neighbors express concerns with height, setbacks, massing, uh, character, uh, town planning staff echoed this. Uh, we did consult planning staff, revised the proposal multiple times, and worked with staff to make sure we did arrive at a design that uh, suited the owner's, owner's needs, and that town planning staff agreed was a minor application and satisfied the four test. Next slide. Uh, the quick design process, we align the bylaws, uh, the owner's desires. We put that on the site, identify the variances, discuss those with uh, planning staff through a variance process. We refine our design. Uh, we propose something final that respects the intent of the bylaw, meets the four tests. This is our process for uh, all projects, pretty much. Uh, next slide. Um, as you all are probably quite aware with the variances, we're effectively proposing three variances, RFA, lot coverage, and front setbacks. Uh, we removed four and the ones in red are existing. I believe there's no op opposition from any parties. Next slide, please. Uh, the first uh, law coverage variance is 31.34% uh, proposed where 25 is permitted. Next slide, please. Uh, I'd like to point out that the existing gazebo and the existing shed shaded in gray on the top of the image contribute to law coverage. The house itself is a 28.8% law coverage. Uh, so this would be 3.8% extra, or 32 square meters, which we consider to be minor. Uh, I'd like to note that 5.3 of the percentage of this lot coverage is a one-story garage, which is shaded in the orange-yellow color. Uh, the red color shows the two-story expansions. The blue color shows the one-story porches, and the purple shows the proposed uh, additional hardscaping. Uh, in terms of lot coverage, most of the proposed expansion is a one-story garage with a low massing effect. Uh, we'd like to note that this property is allowed two-story houses, so while we appear larger, we are respecting the bylaw and conforming with the planned context for this area. Uh, next slide, please. Residential floor area, we're proposing 42.35, or 39 is required. Next slide, please. Uh, we have dramatically reduced the house size. We're proposing an extra 3.3% or 28 square meters, which we consider to be a minor number. Uh, in order to conform with uh, the livable oak fill, uh, we tried to conform by uh, revising the front porch and the uh, side porch flankage and front yards to be one story elements by pushing the second story portion back, introducing horizontal roof lines to break up the front ele uh, elevation into smaller subdivided pieces. Um, we do feel this has reduced the massing and planning staff did agree. Next slide, please. Similarly, we did the same thing at the rear of the house. So in the bottom right image, we can see that we've lowered the family room ceiling here, lowered the roof line here. Uh, this would be more expensive to build, but we do want to try to address neighbors' concerns. We feel this uh, does reduce the street presence and the massing. Um, next slide, please. The front yard setbacks, we're proposing uh, 755. Um, we're 8.16, or I'm sorry, that's reversed, uh, but next slide, please. This image does show just how minor this is. We can see on the right side, the one-story porch that's not meeting the requirement. The rest of the house does meet the requirements shown in the red dashed line. Uh, this porch is 2.6 meters wide and one story, truly minor. Next slide, please. Uh, the public concerns were big. These opposition and support numbers obviously varied quite often, so we can go to the next slide. Please ignore those numbers. Uh, we did try to break this down into uh, certain areas, so we did note a lot of concerns with the livable Oakville design guidelines, uh, the character precedent this would create, massing scale setbacks, environment, greenery, and privacy. Next slide, please. Uh, we took a look closely at the livable Oakville document, and we can see that uh, they describe achieving compatibility as not about replicating the existing form or styles. It's actually to maintain a neighbor neighborhood character, as the guideline defines, which is mostly through uh, massing and transitions and trying to blend in as best as possible. Next slide, please. Uh, the guideline does uh, say to apply it to contact uh, staff, which we did, and uh, they did agree that we were within the livable Oakville guidelines. Next slide, please. Uh, it's broken up to four chapters, which I'm sure many people are aware of. It does note that the definition of compatible means not necessarily the same, but can coexist with an unacceptable adverse impact. So we question, does this project provide uh, unacceptable adverse impacts? And we think it does not. Next slide, please. Uh, the uh, first context neighborhood, that's the first chapter of this document, it talks about character. Uh, it says to complement qualities of the neighborhood. We think we've done that with large setbacks. Uh, greenery, we have a two-story house with a one-story uh, garage, which is common in the area. We have sloped roofs, symmetrical windows, our uh, dwelling depth and established setbacks are maintained. Uh, we do uh, maintain existing uh, building elements and materials like floor and wall projections, dormers, stucco finishes. 
We have uh, compatible transitions from neighbors with the one-story garage. Uh, the document does say if a larger massing is to be proposed, it should be subdivided into smaller building elements like bay windows and projections, which we do have in our design. <clears throat> Further, we have uh, added the uh, one-story porch element and the horizontal roof line to further lower things. Uh, we do feel like this is a human scale. We have large setbacks and short horizontal dimensions, one-story porches, and large setbacks, again, is um, really contributing to um, reducing massing effects. Next slide, please. Uh, the document actually uh, notes that this is a priority lot, this is a corner lot, which uh, asks to provide ample windows, which we do, multiple entrances, which we have interesting facades. Uh, perpendicular to the view terminus, which we do have, and the garage away from the view terminus, which we do have. Um, the owner also looks forward to high quality landscaping renovation with high quality fencing and uh, new softscaping and gardens proposed. Sorry, not softscaping, just enhanced softscaping with new gardens. Uh, rear garden privacy is another uh, aspect of the document. Um, you know, we, we did try our best to appease the rear yard neighbor, which faces this elevation shown in the bottom right hand corner. We did lower the family room um, uh, ceiling to lower the roof there, reduce massing. I'd also like to note there's probably approximately uh, 20 foot five high cedars lining the rear fence, which also does contribute to privacy. Uh, the owner does have their own privacy concerns, but uh, this is the main wall of the house. And unfortunately, it is uh, challenging to, to achieve privacy. We aren't proposing any balconies or overlook decks anything like that. We do have generous setbacks. We can actually, in fact, be much closer to this lot line. Um, and next slide, please. Uh, the next chapter of the document is architectural context, which goes through things like massing, height, and setbacks. Um, it recommends to divide the facade into smaller components, which we feel we've done. We have one-story porches. Uh, the composition of the smaller uh, elements on our facade does uh, match the uh, smaller, uh, more uh, original one-story dwellings in the area. Uh, we do have projections. Uh, we do think this is human scale. We minimized uh, overshadowing by avoiding massing close to property lines. We do meet all setbacks. Uh, the document states that uh, buildings may be taller, but they should make an effort not to appear taller, which we thought we've done with one-story porches, <clears throat> a one-story garage, which is a mid-range building element providing transitioning. Uh, we do meet the height requirement of the bylaw. Uh, setbacks. We're meeting all of our setbacks facing neighbors and actually uh, have an increased setbacks than uh, we're, we need to have. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, primary facade should be oriented to the street. We have this, we have architectural elements, we have a clear sense of arrival, we have a connection to the sidewalk that's separated from the driveway. These are all elements that the document recommends. Uh, our garage is flush with the house and not projected to match the neighborhood. Next slide, please. Uh, landscaping, uh, we truly are not proposing much landscaping different than what's uh, existing. We're expanding the driveway. The driveway meets the bylaws as typical driveway size in the area. And we're proposing um, a paver hardscaped landing uh, sort of porch in front of the front uh, entrance. Again, we do have the pedestrian connection from the sidewalk, with the document recommends this. We have many deciduous trees present, I think much more than many of the lots. We're maintaining grades. Um, and I think the owner is happy to propose a uh, permeable, permeable paver driveway to further meet uh, environment concerns, and they're happy to propose a new tree if it is public and committee concerns. Next slide, please. Uh, heritage is not applicable to our project as we're not um, a heritage designated building, but it is part of the document. I wanted to touch on it. Next slide, please. Um, so there were concerns just generally about the character, but as we heard through the livable Oakville document, it's not necessarily about looking the same or matching the character. Architectural styles uh, are allowed to be different. Uh, the modern chateau is the preferred style of architecture of the owner, and their goal would be to have a house like this, whether within the right or through a variance proposal. Um, we find it to be a, a timeless choice and a very popular choice. Uh, and it does borrow traditional design elements, which are consistent with the neighborhood, such as sloped roof and symmetrical windows. And I think as the area continues to expand and people push their properties to the limits of the bylaw, there will be more developments proposed of this uh, style. Next slide, please. Um, there's also very many different styles here. On the left top image, we can see a two-story porch. On the right, we can see a more modern style, large house, uh, fairly similar to ours. Uh, on the bottom, we see more of the original houses in the area, which are two stories with a one-story garage attached. So we feel we do blend in. Uh, and We do feel there's a diverse uh, architectural range in this neighborhood. And although these may be different zoned properties, it still creates the context in your experience in the neighborhood. Uh, 
Uh, we would like to know Canada's Canada's founded on diversity, and we believe the architectural style of one's home should be their choice and warmly welcomed. Uh, you can see a diverse range of architecture in the neighborhood, and it should continue to increase. Next slide, please. Uh, so the public concerns, again, massing, I think we touched on that a lot in our presentation. Uh, we think the proposed scale is within what the bylaw generally allows. Uh, we do think we comply with the livable Oakville plan. As, in, as far as environment and greenery, uh, we aren't proposing much changes. Uh, we're, we are proposing to remove uh, one, two trees. One tree is large, the other is fairly minor, almost not protected by the bylaw. The owners happy to have permeable pavers and they're happy to provide a stormwater management brief showing how pre and post storm runoff will be maintained. A uh, grading plan will be provided as required for permit. Um, the owners do enjoy the green, uh, greenery very much and is one of the reasons they moved to this property. Uh, shadowing and privacy, uh, the windows and walls are actually within the owners as of right in terms of their position. Uh, the owners are also concerned about their own privacy and will be having blinds and curtains, etc. Uh, and we have shadowing, which is directly related to setbacks and height, which we comply with and actually could be uh, closer in terms of setback. And there is a large, tall cedar hedge providing uh, quite a bit of privacy. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a quick study to show the street capescape presence. The red shows where we could propose walls within the owners as of right. So in the top image, the house could actually move quite closer to Yolanda, providing a lot more verticality, a lot more massing to the streetscape. Likewise, it could move to the right closer to the uh, uh, side yard neighbor. And again, providing a lot more verticality, a lot more massing above the garage, we uh, are able to build to two stories within the owners as of right. Uh, next slide, please. We think this is a good image to show the minor nature of this project. The orange line generally shows the wall thickness of the house. If we were to remove that amount of area, we would meet the RFA requirement. And in addition to that, if we were to remove the shed, we would meet the lot coverage requirement. So we feel this does show the minor nature of the project. Next slide, please. Uh, so we ask ourselves, does this application meet the four tests? Next slide. And as planning staff would agree, we think this does meet the four tests. As we've presented, we do conform with the livable Oakville plans. Uh, we do think we've minimized impacts on adjacent properties. We do meet the general intent of the bylaw. Uh, we meet height and setback requirements for the most part, reducing massing effects. And we noted that a proposal completely within the owner's right could have a much more dramatic massing and scale. And we consider this, we feel we are within the general intent of the bylaw. We do feel this is appropriate. It's a residential house on a residential property and we're conforming to height and setback requirements. Um, we believe it's appropriate for this land. Um, minor in nature, we think that the numbers uh, are minor. We think that the, them in combination are minor and uh, we don't think that we're providing any undue impacts on neighbors. Next slide, please. Uh, so in summary, we consulted with town staff to ensure we satisfy the four tests and the livable Oakville plan. We've revised the drawing multiple times and tried our best to address public concerns. Uh, we think this proposal maintains the existing and the, importantly, the plan context of the neighborhood and how this neighborhood will continue to grow. And we think we generally comply with height and setback requirements, reducing massing concerns. Um, and as the official plan livable Oakville document states, is a proposal creating unacceptable adverse impacts on the neighbors. We do not think these are unacceptable adverse impacts on the neighbors. We think this application is a minor and that we've respectfully addressed uh, public concerns. And that would uh, conclude our presentation. Hey, thank you, Mr. Professor Kenji. Are there any questions or items of clarification? Okay, Mr. Talski, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I, I think I need to say, uh, I don't find it helpful to put up on the screen that we could do this or we could have done that or if we do this, we comply because that's not in front of the committee. So um, I'm not sure that uh, showing what the ease of which you could comply with the bylaw actually helps your argument. Um, but I guess my major question uh, is, and I'm going to, Madam Chair, after the same question for staff, in the original application, staff were very clear the design, the massing, did not comply with the official plan, did not fit the character of the neighborhood. And when I looked at uh, this application 
without putting the two buildings side by side, I frankly can't tell the difference. It looks like, you know, the design was for the most part just shrunk by 5%. So I'd like to hear from both the applicant and by staff how this suddenly can be deemed to comply with the uh, official plan, the character of the neighborhood, when it appears to me that it's essentially the exact same application, just a little smaller with no effort in the design to minimize the impacts. Okay. Maybe the applicant can take the question first and then. Sure. Mr. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, to answer your question, showing things that we can do show uh, that we do comply with the bylaws because uh, if we are able to create a more dramatic massing than, uh, and we're not, then we are better complying with the bylaws. So that's why we do like to show those images. It's not supposed to be a slight or a threat, just uh, a tool to see that we are within what the bylaw would generally allow. So uh, our position is that uh, a building completely within the bylaw uh, could be much worse. So it's uh, just a tool to reflect that sentiment. Um, you know, we did not show the plan side by side, but I think by seeing that we removed four variances and reduced the size dramatically in our slides, we did list how much we did reduce the size by. Uh, we do meet all the setbacks now. We made design changes and character changes like lowering the front porch roof and the rear family roof. Um, so, uh, and you mentioned all we did was shrink it. Yes, that is what we did. We shrank it to better comply with the bylaws and, and with the official plan. Um, I wouldn't say that we didn't put any effort into this. We did put actually extreme amount of effort uh, trying to incorporate neighbors concerns and also what the owners want to do, uh, which is obviously their right to develop their property. Okay, Mr. Mose. To you, Madam Chair. Um, so uh, with the revised application, staff um, looked at the um, uh, the variances that were being that that have been removed, which includes height, driveway width, a rear yard, maximum encroachment of the minimum yard for uncovered access stairs, and uh, staff also noted the um, reduction in height um, of the rear uh, open to below area, as well as um, increased front yard. Um, uh, which uh, a lot, which makes the main wall of the dwelling to comply uh, with the front yard, except for just the, the front porch ele element. Stuff also uh, took into account the reduction in uh, residential floor area, as well as law coverage. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Riaz. Go ahead, Mr. Tusk. So follow up for staff, I guess, Jose, I'm, I'm not hearing the, the justification. I understand they reduced the number of variances, but it, in my mind, and obviously in staff's it's different, but I'd like to understand they haven't addressed the major issues that staff raised in the July in the overall massing character, um, not uh, providing appropriate transitions uh, with coming back with literally the same design, just a little smaller. So I, I'm, I'd like to understand why I see this so differently. Uh, staff, um, again, my, my view, it's very, very similar application, but staff's position on the fundamentals of complying with the official plan, the character of the neighborhood, uh, has so dramatically changed. To you, Madam Chair, to uh, Member Tulowski, um staff did feel that uh, um, with the reduction in the variances themselves, as well as um, providing some more uh, single story elements, um, uh, including reducing the front and the flankage porches to single story elements, which originally were two story elements, uh, that help mitigate the massing impacts, uh, as well as reduct as well as the elimination of the high variance. Um, so all of these combined uh, helped um, mitigate the massing impacts. And staff believe that that, um, um, in staff's opinion, this uh, addressed our concerns on the massing. If I may, Madam Chair, through you, also provide a response. 
Um, go, go ahead, Mr. Yes, I, I think uh, what we need to also consider is if this application is meeting the four tests, um, and as we described, we think it is, and that's why planning staff are agreeing. Uh, we were saying, uh, Member Teleski, Mr. Member Teleski is saying that's it's basically the same design, but in fact, it's not the same design. We've we've downscaled quite a bit. We've uh, reduced heights. Uh, we've made significant changes. Uh, he's saying that uh, the character isn't in line, but as the livable Oakville document states. The character doesn't need to look the same. Uh, we just need to comply with how the document defines character, which we thought we did present that we have done. Uh, he mentioned transitionings. We have ample setbacks. We could be much closer to the property lines. And our garage is a one-story element, which transitions nicely from the neighboring property. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Towski, do you have anything further before we move on to anyone else? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just, um... And I guess I'm also struggling with the totality of all that's being done here. And, you know, recognizing this is a corner lot, you, you know, have the advantage of being able to bring the house and the existing houses further out than the rest of the street on Yolanda. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're getting the advantage of the flankage yard. Um, but you're also you're putting the second floor right up at the same level, creating what I, I feel is a wall. But I understand that you're allowed to do that because you're not asking for a variance on the exterior yard. So you're taking advantage of the exterior yard, yet you're also asking to continue to treat the what's the zoning front yard as a rear yard by fully fencing it, having accessory structures in it, um, having a very high, in my view, imposing screen that can be seen through the cedars in the neighbor's front yard. So I'm just struggling with the appropriateness of you, in my view, taking advantage of the exterior of flankage yard zoning that allows you to bring two full stories ahead of the other houses, but then also asking the committee to allow you to treat the front yard as if it's not a front yard. Uh, uh, through you, Madam Chair, may I respond? Go ahead. Um, uh, we don't bring the house further into the flankage yard to respect the neighbor, and actually as the livable uh, Oakville document states, we should maintain established setbacks. So we'd like to keep our wall aligned with our neighbor's wall, uh, and, you know, our front yard, uh, we are maintaining the existing foundation in this area. So we're building up on top of the existing foundation towards the front yard. Uh, and again, on this side, we are also meeting the established setback, generally matching the neighbors. Uh, so uh, I'm struggling to understand uh, how we can better respond to to respecting the bylaws and the livable, livable plan document. Uh, I don't think moving further towards the flankage yard and having more verticality on, on the street would be ideal. And maybe uh, Mr. Riaz, the, the town planner, could comment too. Uh, Mr. Mosev, if you have anything, and then I'd like to move to the other members, if there's anyone else who'd like to address the comments and then move to the um, neighbors. To you, Madam Chair, I believe I've um, addressed um, uh, Mr. Tlowski's comment uh, question. Uh, please feel free to ask uh, uh, if there are any other questions, and I'll respond. Okay, very well. Thank you, um, members. Any further comments or items of clarification before we take it up with the neighbors? Go ahead, Mr. Dickey. I just want to uh, see if I understand this. You talk about as of right. You're going. You're asking for nine variances, and uh, the majority of them are for existing non-compliance issues. So maybe I should be asking the planner. As of right, means that they would have to correct these these other existing issues. Is that not correct? To you, Madam Chair, uh, to uh, Member Dickey. Uh, no, they're asking for variances for the existing structures as well. Yeah, so if, when you, when you or, or the uh, agent are referring to as of right, they would have to correct them. If they were to build as, as of right, 
they would have to do something with the swimming pool, tear down the shed, tear down part of that that uh, deck on the one side. Am I not correct? And there's other. Um, through you, Madam Chair, um, as of right, uh, would mean to conform with the zoning bylaw, but from what I understand, um, uh, they are asking for a, a variance, uh, the variances for um, the existing structures plus um, the residential floor area, a lot coverage and front yard setback. So I wouldn't consider this uh, application and as of right um, application. Mr. Dickey, I oh, think no, no, no. when the comment was made about as of right, I think it was made with respect to the height, I think. I may be wrong from what I recall. May I, uh, Madam Chair? Go ahead, Mr. Uh, uh Yes, Mr. Member Dickey, uh, I, I think you are correct that uh, we would need to comply if we were to propose something within our as of right. And uh, that would be, yes, the owner's intent would be, yes, to completely uh, demolish the existing structures on the site and propose something brand new rather than maintaining some of the existing foundation. They would remove that to have more freedom, remove everything to have more freedom in their design to propose something that would be within their as of right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any further questions or items of clarification? Okay. Um, I mean, I recognize that some of this is existing and that you've pulled back from several things, but I can also see how uh, the, 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 the design as a whole, if we were looking at it as a completely new application, it, it is a, a bit uh, much. Okay, I have, Madam Secretary Treasurer, have you been keeping track of the people who have their hands uh, raised and who is going to be addressing the committee? Um, I've moved um, Robert Becker and Nancy Ortenberg um, into the meeting. Um, and I think there's one, oh, they keep putting their hand up and down. At this time, there's only those two uh, that wish to okay. speak. Okay, let's start with Mr. Becker, because I saw him first. So go ahead, Mr. Becker. You've got five minutes, and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. I'll try and get through this. There's a lot of material, as you know, from the applicants, um, that there's a lot of material to cover. I'm going to try to address it. I also want to address... Um, some of the misrepresentations we've heard. Um, I do. Mr. Becker, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but let me clarify something. Are you representing no, everyone I, or are you no, representing no. only yourself? Just myself. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Go ahead, sir. Um, and I do uh, certainly agree with the, uh, the two members who have um, talked about this already um, that uh, not much has changed. Let's go to slide two. Um, the application seeking a variance of 25%, their original uh, amount was two, or their request is 262, which is 53 square meters larger, um, noted 570 square feet. It's also the size of a railway box car. So what I'm envisioning is a house that's allowed maximum on the site plus a railway box car. Uh, to me, that's not minor. 25% um, 25.4% is also not minor. It's not minor in my house value. It's not minor in my in tax increase. Um, I don't know when 25% is minor. Um, I would have liked to see that justification come from the planners in a written matter. Um, I, uh, apparently the same as, as the members of this committee uh, because it's a bit baffling um, that, that there was an opposition um given those large numbers um the picture that i show um illustrates that this building will be twice the size of any of its neighbors i will point out um, that i took pictures of the streetscape the one building is actually uh the subject property the um, buildings that were shown by the applicant are not the neighbors. These um, side splits and back splits 
um, that are uh, shown here are the neighbors. If we could go to the next slide. Um, what's more puzzling for me is um, we, the 1089 Melvin, which took a deferral. This uh, property uh, requested only 33 extra meters squared and only a 16% increase. And the town planner in that case uh, took significant uh, effort to review it and um, suggest that it did not meet the proposal uh, for zoning bylaw and impact to the streetscape. Um, so again, I think it is really incumbent that we see in writing why um, 2245 Yolanda is held to a different standard um, than the one at 1089 Melvin that's on this same docket. If we could go to the next slide. Neighborhood fit and uh, is really important when we talk, uh, read section 11.1.9. Um, the uh, sub bullet A, scale, height, mass, scheduling, architecture, carrier, uh, character. It is clear that this building is over four times the, the uh, area facing Yolanda than any of the buildings in its neighborhood. That's four times. That's incredible. The actual definition of the style that's being built is imposing whereas the definition of the style of the side splits and the split levels in the neighborhood is to minimize the massing by in embedding the garage with the house and reducing the square footage, uh, uh, reducing the lot coverage while increasing the square footage. So it, it's clear to me that this does not maintain or preserve the scale of the site or the immediate context, um, and that it does create an overpowering effect on the streetscape. Um, so again, I really would have loved to see um, the planners, um, which did come out and say uh, they weren't objecting to this, what the reasoning behind it was, because I was unable to see that um, in the written explanation. Um, if we could go to the next slide. I'd just like to look at Melvin again. M Melvin um, is a very similar build than as this actually, only except it's only 37 feet wide, not 97 feet wide. And the planner in that um, instance uh, identified properly that the pro proposed dwelling does not meet the character um, of the neighborhood and it would affect the massing and surrounding area. Um, I will note that Melvin is being built between two new builds of similar height and across the road there's a new build under construction of a similar height and style and down the road there's a an absolute mansion um, when they contrast that with the um, size and massing and contrast the existing streetscape at 2245 Yolanda I'm even further puzzled by the conclusions um, we've heard from the planning department. So uh, again, I mean, I, I think I heard this um, earlier. I think it's really important that we see in writing an assessment of this and we can understand why these two are being held to completely different standards. Um, if we move on to slide six, um, privacy and shadowing. I'm glad that the, uh, the, the agent for the applicant called this out um, because it does state in section H that you need to pay attention to privacy and shadowing. And what is really important um, is that the, the combination of the, uh, the variances and the build style support the massive box. I know uh, the agent for the applicant kept showing diagrams with great big squares on them, but in reality, it's um, unable to build a house of that size um, unless they get the additional RFA and the addi additional uh, lot coverage. It has to come from somewhere. Um, so, Mr. Becker, I'm yeah. going to give you one more minute, and then we have to so move on to the other speakers. I, I, I would like to finish because I think I have some very important points, and I had to clarify the um, misrepresentations that we heard earlier. So I'll keep going you, quickly. You, you have to realize that we've got 32 people who would actually like to speak. Yes. I don't know how many of them have appeared, but yep. really... I have this and I've one more slide, already, Madam Chair. I've already given you three minutes extra just for your information. 
So okay. I would like you to respect when I say you've got one more minute. Okay, thank you. I'd like to point out that in the shortest day of the year, over half of this property to the north will be in the sunset all year and it will be in the shade all year. On the shortest day of the year, the, uh, the sorry, the longest day of the year, the sun um, will only be in the yard for five hours. Everybody else will be enjoying the pool. Our neighbor will only have five hours. If we can go to my last slide, you all know that the letters of uh, objection are overwhelming. Um, the numbers were wrongly presented before. I believe the correct numbers are 32 for objection. They said six for support, but actually some of the supports have been withdrawn. In fact, all five letters of support from the July hearing have been withdrawn and replaced with objections because those individuals felt they were misled by the applicant and by the agent for the applicant on this dwelling. And I think it's important for this committee to, um, to consider um, the weight of the, the community that's speaking. My last um, slide is simply me saying, I'd love to work with the builder, but um, it has to be together. He hasn't reached out. Thank you, Madam Chair. I apologize for going over. Thank you, Mr. Becker. We appreciate your uh, submissions. Um, I have okay. I, I want to take people in the order that they've uh, of the in the order that they've um, put their hands up. But I do see uh, Ms. Sakura online right now. You also mentioned Nancy Ortenbert. Yes, she's in the meeting. Okay, okay, so, so she, she had her hand up first. So let's go to Ms. Orden. Mr. Fratekanji, please uh, take note of all of the comments because you'll have a chance to respond. Yes, I am. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, um, we have uh, the town staff with us as well. Uh, we have, if you have any questions of, of them, please keep note of, uh, of your questions. Um, Okay, uh, Ms. Ortenberg, uh, can you put your camera on? Do you have access to that? If you'd like to speak. Okay, Thank you. I'm, I'm going to say the same thing to everybody. I'd like to be fair to everyone. Can you please keep your comments to five minutes and try not to mention points that have already been um, mentioned. Uh, I get that Mr. Robert Becker uh, uh, went first and he may have uh, taken some of the thunder, but um, the comments are well noted. Uh, he did a great job with his presentation. So if you feel that he's covered a point, just keep going. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee for permitting me the opportunity to speak to you today about this application. My neighbor, Robert Becker, um, did show some comparisons that I was going to speak to, so I will uh, delete those, my point, those from my points from my comments in the interest of time. Thank you. In my letter of objection, I outlined many reasons to object to the variance request. Um, I'm here tonight to reiterate that in a larger context of some facts. My first concern outlined in my objection letter was overall stormwater management. Um, in September, just a few weeks ago, Oakville's Director of Corporate Asset Management recommended to Council the creation of a stormwater management fee, noting that the town's rainwater management strategy is expected to require close to $640 million over 30 years. That's going to cost us $21 million annually. In her words, she said, based on a preliminary financial analysis, the town does not have sufficient funding resources to support those needs. Um, a quick look at Environment Canada points out that while reactive stormwater management approaches such as those outlined by Director Hewitson um, may help, preventative measures such as reducing the oversizing of buildings on lots will directly support stormwater management by maintaining permeable surfaces. Then this application, the hardscaping around the pool, the staircase beside the dry, um, and the driveway to a common, a 40 foot driveway, um, uh, the sheds uh, all contribute to a lack of permeable space. That's not being discussed in this application in the way that it could be impacting permeable surfaces on this lot. Um, I personally worked for the city of Mississauga between 2015 and 2019. In the decade of 2010 to 2020, there was terrible flooding for years. Everyone at the city knew that some of the business co biggest causes of that was oversized houses on lots where variance has been granted, granted 
and the loss of permeable surfaces that making storm systems being overrun. It was an unfortunate pattern that has caused the city to put into a stormwater management fee in 2016 um, on an already existing high tax base. Legacy of decades of approved variances and poor planning um, were approved and that's because of precedent. The result is a stormwater fee this year that will top 57 million for the residents of Mississauga. Where is that money coming from? The tax base. It's not coming from the feds, not coming from the province, it's coming from us individual homeowners. Is that really a legacy we want to leave for future generations? A legacy of fixing bad approvals because let's face it, not one of these oversized variances is ever going to be reversed one by one, but it's like a death by a thousand cuts. We are setting ourselves up for a thousand decisions that are going to cause problems down the road. This application between the increase in lot coverage and hardscaping uh, will reduce the permeability of the lot and thus negatively impact stormwater management. And while each of these variances in their elements, 15% here, 25% there, taken holistically is not minor and sets dangerous precedent. The second part of my presentation begs the question, the pattern of allowing variances of any request is, there's only truly one word for it, it's absurd. Presumably, the bylaws have been built to accommodate the design of all the systems integrated and working within a neighborhood, like stormwater runoff. Every variance cumulatively negatively impacts that overall plan. So I'm appealing to the director of planning and staff to review why they're approving and ask why should variances be approved? I'm not against improving your home. I'm not against adding on to your home. What I am against is people trying to buck the bylaws and ask for additional, additional, additional. If you want to build a bigger house and you're going to buy a lot to do that, build with what the zoning bylaw permits and nothing more. We already see evidence of this allowing variances negatively impacting neighbors, and yet we see it time and time again of these approvals. Someone has to say no. The pattern is absurd for future generations. And will set us up for issues like Mississauga has now. I appeal to this committee to think about the mission of the Town of Oakville official plan, which has the words natural environment, environmental sustainability baked in the first two lines of it. And please send developers a clear message. Design within the guidelines that have been set out. There's a good reason for them. I humbly request that the committee deny this request. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Orstenberg. Um, Mr. Socorro, go ahead, sir. I try to be very quick because it's been so much said already. I'm owner of my wife and I own the 354 Sunset Drive property. And that's the property will be directly affected by the proposal development of the 2245 Yolanda Drive. I mean, first of all, I would like to thank you to all the neighbors um, and especially the ones that originally they support the application from July 12. And after learning about the scale and magnitude of this development, they withdraw their support and strongly opposed to, the, to, to, to this application. Um, first of all, um, my wife and I we are very disappointed that we were not approached by the owner or the agent um, regarding this uh, development. We had a great relationship with the owner until the day when um, I refused to support the, this development and I opposed it. And we are also very disappointed that none of our concern originally placed in July 12 were taken in consideration in this revised application. And the agent said that he consulted with the staff. That's great, but he didn't, and the applicant didn't concern and contact with us, the neighbors who will be directly affected by this, and other neighbors around this property. This is, in my opinion, unacceptable. I don't want to go into the details, explain how this development will affect us. It will be devastating on our property. We know that according to the zoning bylaw, this property can develop, it can add the second floor with the windows directly looking over our property. And I understand that he referred to the cedars that 
yes, they provide me privacy. First of all, they are not as tall as 25 feet, but it's okay. I'm not going to argue with this. The second one, they're quite old. They're fragile. They've been trimmed by the previous owners in a proper way. And also the cat. I don't know how long I'm going to have them. That's the only one thing that will separate me and provide the privacy. Otherwise, the windows directly from the second floor will look into my property. Now, I just want to make the, uh, the last comment. Sorry, I become emotional because you know, this is not right. I've been living in this house for 2006 and what is going through the last couple of weeks has been extremely stressful for me. The applicant wants additional uh, lot coverage. Why he wants to do this? Because he wants to extend this property towards to 2251 by taking to the minimum separation between two houses. The end result will be that my property will be completely overshadowed by this new dwelling that is proposed right now. The, the agent saying that he was taking in consideration the, uh, the, 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 the neighborhood. No, he didn't take it. He's still asking to completely overshadow my property. You know, the, on top of this, the new addition will completely cover the other structure that he's asking, and I'm talking about the pool, gazebo, deck. Shed is a little bit on the side, it will not affect me. This three structure already has a significant level of the noise and affect my, the enjoyment of my property. If he's able to extend this property towards to 2255, I will have no room to breathe in on the north side. On top of this, all the structure, the pool, the deck, the gazebo will be completely closed by almost 30 feet wall within only 21 feet separation. In my opinion, and saying that this development will not affect negatively my property, I, I don't understand why somebody can say state the statement. It will affect, it will be a devastating effect on my property. It also will be devastating effect on the entire neighbor. That's why the neighbors stand up. Today we stand up to maintain and, and prevent from this type of destruction to this neighborhood. We love this neighborhood. We've been living for years in this neighborhood and we are proud of this neighborhood. And that's why we're standing today to maintain and protect this neighborhood. We welcome everybody, but if somebody is coming, please respect us, respect the neighbors and the neighborhood. And this was the, exactly what my neighbor said to me on our first meeting, respect neighbors. Please respect the neighbors. This project is devastating on me and it's devastating on entire neighborhood. I'm sorry for the emotion, but uh, this has uh, been so stressful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sukor. Um, anyone else uh, waiting in line to speak, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Has anyone yeah, else, else raised we... their hand for this property at zero nine? Sorry, at two two four five Yolanda, which is application CAV zero nine one of twenty twenty three. Uh, there's no one at this time. Okay. Um, are there any questions? from the committee to the um, neighbors who have spoken. Okay, I see none. Um, are there any uh, questions from the committee to, um, well, actually I have a question, I'll save it, but go ahead, Mr. Uh, Fretikinj Jelly. Um, you can respond to the comments made um, uh, by the neighbors. And I ask you to also remain within the five minutes because we did extend the yes. time for the presentation. Yes, I'll try to move very, very fast, Madam Chair. Uh, there was reference, you, my mic is on, sorry, right? Yes, it uh, is yeah. on. Okay, uh, there was reference to Melvin, which is actually a very different development. It has a much smaller lot, much smaller setbacks uh, from the property lines and from the house. There was reference about scale. What scale is defined by setbacks in height, which we generally meet. Um, there was some talk about a 25 
percent increase, which isn't an accurate way to represent this. Our, our variance is for about 3.8 percent. Uh, um, minor is considered less than 5 percent in statistics, structural design, HVAC design, and our industry, 5 percent or less is considered minimum. Um, we are not asking for a height variance. The height is within the owners as of right. Um, there were some images that were shown were not accurately scaled, um, which made the house look much larger than it is. Um, yeah, there was some talk about uh, the images we showed showing where we could expand, uh, expand, and that's true. We would have to revise the design, but the fact of the matter is a wall could still be positioned where we presented within the owner's right. Uh, in terms of storm management, uh, we would provide a storm management brief with uh, showing a stamp line engineer showing how pre and post development um, stormwater runoff was maintained. This would be via permeable pavers and an infiltration pit. Uh, so again, storm runoff before and after would be maintained. Uh, um, there was some talk about taxes and, and how uh, infrastructure will be supported. The owner's taxes will go up as a result of this uh, development. They will be paying more taxes. Um, I think the committee can correct me if I'm wrong, but variances do not create precedent. Uh, each application is reviewed under its own merit. Um, uh, there was some talk about having people just stay within the bylaw, but a minor variance, uh, which is why we're here tonight, is part of an owner's right. Uh, it's a very common occurrence. It is part of the Planning Act. Again, this is a rightful application. Um, uh, we consider uh, we did consider public concerns. We did this through the letters that were submitted, and we did work very hard to try and address all of them. There were many, and we tried to involve them into our drawings. We did want to reach out, but uh, Oakville does not actually provide uh, the owner's emails as its private information to them. Uh, they only provided address, which we found to be very personal to arrive unannounced to uh, people's houses. Um, uh, you know, there was concerns about privacy and we are sensitive to that. Uh, and, and, you know, we are also sensitive to uh, the owner's requirements and they do want a two-story development. Unfortunately, this is a, a close-knit neighborhood where it's very tough to position windows that, that don't overlook. Uh, you know, the owner does have privacy concerns. It does go both ways. Um, and, and shadows, uh, they, they are really out of our control. We are proposing a mass that's generally within the bylaw allowance. Uh, two stories are allowed, um, and, and it, again, this is not a slight, but uh, it would be possible to build a wall closer to the property line, which would worsen shadows. So we are very sensitive to this, and we don't want to ruin people's property experiences, but at the same time, we need to respect what these owners are allowed to do with their property and what they want to do with their property. They want to live here, uh, they love this area, and this is where they want to put down their roots, um, and I think that should be something that they should be allowed to do. Um, unfortunately, again, as I said, this is a result of living in, in a close neighborhood uh, where neighbors are close to you, shadows are a factor. Um, and we are trying to respect the bylaws and, and we feel that we did that and we feel uh, that we do meet the four tests and, and the planners do agree with that. There was also a talk about a 30 foot wall. Our wall is in fact 20 feet and eight inches high. Uh, so I think I addressed most of the concerns that were made. Okay, thank you. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, in one of your slides, you had 28 meters squared is the extra residential floor area that you had applied for. Is it 32? Um, lot, are you referring uh, for residential floor area? Floor, or, yeah, the extra residential yeah, floor area. It's uh, 42.35 is what we're proposing, and uh, we're permitted 39%. Uh, no, that's in percentage. What is that in meters squared? Oh, is it in meters 28 squared, or 32? Uh, it was 28. 28 meters squared. Okay. Which is roughly... Okay. Um, are there any questions or items of clarification from the committee members, finally to uh, town staff or to the agent? before we take the matter into committee. Okay, I see none, I'll give you a couple of minutes. Madam Chair, may I just make one comment, please? Um, okay. Uh, I, I would just like um, any uh, decision to please be based and to make comments around the uh, four tests, please, for the record. Oh, okay. Well, that's what we normally do anyways. Okay. My apologies. Thank you, Madam Chair.
Are we ready to entertain a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll uh, I'll take a, an opportunity to get the ball rolling in terms of a discussion here. Um, um, uh, I Madam Chair, I, um, I, I'm seeing a neighborhood that is, um, has been relatively stable, had relatively few new homes established uh, in, in the immediate vicinity of the, the site. Um, and I'm seeing uh, a building uh, that in my mind is, that is, um, the architectural character and design of the building is such to exacerbate the variances that are being requested. And um, I feel that well, the um, RFA and coverage variances are relatively modest, the uh, cumulative impact of the totality of the variances and the um, the architectural style, massing and location of the building on site will contribute significantly to impacts upon the streetscape character and uh, the enjoyment of adjacent properties. Um, on, you know, with those comments being said, I do not feel that the requested variances conform to the four tests. Uh, in particular, I would suggest that um, the desirability for the appropriate development of the land is significantly impaired on this. I'll be putting forward a motion of refusal on those grounds. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hardcastle. Um, any further comments? Go ahead, Mr. Kowalski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Hardcastle stole my term. My issue is as well with the totality of what's in front of us. Uh, the applicant's asking to keep their existing non-compliant uh, features. They're asking to build new, but they're asking to build in addition to what the bylaw permits. And in my view, has made little effort to try to minimize the impact of the massing of the structure. Um, so, um, I'm going to support the motion. I, I don't believe the original or the current application meet the four tests of the Planning Act. I don't believe it uh, complies with the official plan design guidelines. And again, in the totality, the variances are not minor. They're not meeting the intent of the bylaw, and in my view, definitely not desirable. Madam Chair, I understand that if the committee um, passes the motion that the applicant can appeal to Ontario Land Tribunal and all the residents will have to attend and have to restate their case, I appreciate they could do that. Um, it would be my hope that as many, many applicants do and we encourage them to do, that the applicant would actually go knock on the doors. We see it all the time and try to work it out with the neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kowalski. Any further comments? Is that, is that your hand, Ms. Yu? Yes, can you see me? Can you see my yes. hand? Okay. Yeah, yeah, now I can see it. I wasn't <laughs> sure. <laughs> Go ahead. So, yeah. Um, yeah, actually, uh, I, I was going to say, um, I was going to support um, the motion that we could not support this, um, uh, the variances proposed by the applicant. I, I, when I, when I look at the application, even though they are like, they, uh, they divided into nine variances, but when we look at this application as a whole, it makes me feel like this, the proposal building based, um, 
based on the existing foundation, it would it would be considered massive, and uh, the scale is um is is way bigger than comparing to the other properties in this neighborhood. That's why I think this uh, proposal doesn't meet the protest under planning act. Unfortunately, as so as such, I cannot support this application, and uh, I would support the motion to deny this uh, proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Monsieur. Anything further? All right. Um, the motion is to deny the application as seeing as though it's an overdose and it does not meet the four tests of the planning act. All those in support. Okay, the application has been uh, denied and none opposed. Madam Chair, have a good night. Have a good night. Okay, application CAV 137 of uh, 2023 deferred from the September 20th meeting at 373 Tennyson Drive. Once again, this is application CAV 137 of 2023 at 373 Tennyson Drive. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905 815 six zero nine five i have an email of support from a rohan ram and i have mr bensal as the agent on record okay if they'd like to join the meeting can they please raise their hand so i can move them Okay, and moving the agent into the meeting. Good evening, to, uh, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is Emma Probansel at 106 Woodburn Circle, Brampton, Ontario. I am the agent for this application. Go ahead. So we're here uh, today uh, as a deferral. Um, uh, as the uh, previous meeting, I think uh, we had uh, uh, support and uh, it was deferred as the, the signage was taken down. Uh, we did find out that the tenant that was living there took it down thinking that it was a political poster. Um, so since uh, we repaid the fees, put the sign back up, uh, we can confirm that, that the sign was there today as well. Um, we're asking for four minor variances. Uh, I can quickly go over them. Uh, we're asking for a garage floor area increase of uh, 46.81 square meters, where the bylaw permits 45 square meters. We're asking to reduce the interior side yard from 2.4 meters to 2.04 meters. We're asking for an increase of residential floor area to 38.35%, whereas the bylaw uh, allows for 37 percent and we're also asking for a lot coverage increase to 30.9 percent where the bylaw allows 25 percent i'd like to note again that uh, about five percent of that coverage is for the covered deck in the back if there's any questions that the committee members have i'd be happy to answer. thank you mr Ransom. Are there any questions or items of clarification of the applicant at this time? Mr. Dickey, go ahead. Just a um, question to make sure I have this right. Lot coverage, your house and your garage covers 261.21 square meters. That alone exceeds what the zoning bylaw. So you want to increase it 
you want to increase your lot co coverage from 260.95 permitted by the zoning bylaw to 322.53 meters squared. That's a 23.6% increase. That's a pretty big number. Do I, do I have those numbers correct in your mind? Then, Madam Chair, we're asking for a 5.9% increase. And the oh, five point. Oh, oh, excuse me. Let's do the math of how big your your square footage is. Not not an increase. So you take thirty nine point nine and divided by twenty five. I don't think you come up with five percent. Your mathematics is wrong. Uh, the Madam Chair, uh, what what lot coverage are you are you reading uh, to Amanda Dick or Dickie? I'm reading. From the variance in the notice that says you're asking for a lot coverage of 30.9% and your lot coverage is going to be 322.53 meters squared. You take that number in your mathematics. The zoning allows you 260.95 meters squared. You divide those two numbers and you come up with an excess above the zoning bylaw of 23.6%. You're building 23.6% greater square footage on your lot than the zoning by all lot. Not 5%. I don't think that's how it's concluded, but. I agree with uh, Madam Chair. I don't think that's correct. Um, something, something's missing there. Okay, you won't pitch me. Thank you. 61. Um, right, Ms. McKnight, do you want to comment on how the calculations are done for lot coverage just for the benefit of uh, everyone and the, uh, the attendees? Yes, for sure. Um, through you, Madam Chair, lot coverage is calculated by the total square, square um, footage of the dwelling, inclusive of any accessory buildings on the property divided by the total lot area. So our, our zoning staff have reviewed the application at hand. Um, they have also done a calculation of the lot coverage and are of the opinion that the lot coverage brought forward by the applicant is correct. Um, I will again review that, but to the best of my knowledge, the lot coverage that the applicant did bring forward has been reviewed by our zoning staff. and. Um, it's a 61, it's a 61.58 meters squared difference. That's the increase, correct? Yes, through you, Madam Chair, that's correct. Okay. Okay, any further items of clarifications or questions? Go ahead, Mr. Bansal. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I'd just like to re-highlight that uh, additional 5% is the covered porch in the back. So just the house and the garage without the covered porch is about 26%. So I just like to highlight that. Thank so you. you're saying what's contributing to the increase of that 61 uh, meters squared is mostly the covered porches? The covered porch in the back, yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mesa. Any questions or items of clarification? I see not. Uh, has anyone called with interest for this application, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Um, there's no one at this time. Okay, thank you. We'll take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'm going to move this application be approved as applied for. Uh, find that it does meet the test of the Planning Act. 
I would uh, I'd like to indicate that there's um, one letter of support and I would like to speak to Mr. Dickey's comments. Um, I, I may have a very different view if the uh, 600 plus square foot coverage um, was all in the size of the house, but I'm satisfied that with the majority of that being uh, the covered porches, which I believe enhance the designs of the building and the usability of the space. I'm satisfied with that variance. And Chair, I would um, make the approval subject to two conditions that the dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated April 16th, 2023 and elevation drawings dated March 31st, 2023 and that the approval expires within two years of the building permit hasn't been issued. Very well, thank you, Mr. Tosky. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none, all those in support. Okay, all those opposed. Uh, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Bansal. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, application uh, CAV 147 of 2023 at 68 Pebble Ridge Place. Again, it's CAV 147 of 2023 at 68 Pebble Ridge uh, Place. It was deferred from October the 18th for insufficient signage. And we do have two letters of support from a Mr. J Tinder Sampi and uh, Priya Makar. And I have uh, Joseph Dome as the um, agent. Okay, move the agent into the meeting. Can you hear me okay? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Dome. Um, yes, my name is Joe Dome, 133 Torres Dale, uh, two-story dwelling in this uh, new subdivision. There are three variances requested. Um, variance number one refers to the proposed 20.6-meter uh, depth. Um, I would like to highlight that this measurement includes the front and rear covered porches, while the depth of the dwelling itself is 15.82 uh, meters and does vary further across uh, the width on both floors to break up uh, massing. Uh, variance number two refers to the proposed FAR of... Um, 32.65%, uh, and variance number three refers to the proposed lot coverage of 28.27%. but 28 um, There was a lot of uh, thought put into the design features by the architect and owner, which do help uh, break up the massing, including the aforementioned length mitigations of the dwelling being significantly under the bylaw, the use of different materials incorporating different uh, elements, um, and the fact that the proposed dwelling is also within the bylaw for height and, uh, and all setbacks. Um, in fact, on the, the west side, uh, there is a 6.9 meter side yard setback to the second floor and a 7.44 meter side setback to the main floor. Um, the owner has gathered uh, two letters of support from uh, 76 Pebble Ridge and 340 Lakeshore Road, um, which are on file. Um, planning staff have uh, no concerns and um, uh, no neighbors have concerns. Overall, we feel this application is uh, quite reasonable and minor in nature, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dome. Are there any questions or items of clarification for Mr. Dome at this time? I see none. Has anyone called with interest for that application, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Uh, there's no one at this time. Okay, very well. We'll take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Um, having undertaken my site visit, having reviewed the materials, including the written staff report, having heard the uh, presentation from Mr. Dome, I am satisfied that the requested variance is conformed to the four tests of the Act. Accordingly, I'll put forward a motion of approval. Um, the motion being subject to conditions, those being that the dwelling be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated September 6, 2023, and elevation drawings uh, submitted with the application, and that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision. Uh, I would uh, note that there were no members of the public present with respect to this matter. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay, so we have application CAV 141 of 2023 at 88 Balbier Road. Again, it's CAV 141 of 2023 at 88 Balbier Road. It is a deferred application from October the 4th due to its sufficient signage. And we have two mails of support from a Jihad Alard and a Ted Fungural. And I have Mr. Elahi as the agent. Good evening, Madam Chair, committee members, and town staff. My name is Salman Elahi, and I'm the agent representing, representing application uh, CAVA 141-2023. It's a uh, below grade entrance at the backyard. Uh, we are constructing a basement apartment. Due to the corner lot, there is no other way that we can accommodate a below grade entrance. So we are requesting for this relief uh, from the bylaw. We have gone through the report of the town. Uh, we agree with all the terms and conditions. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to forward forward. And thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Lai, thank you. This is a massive projection into the rear yard. Um, any questions or items of clarification? I see none. Has anyone called with interest for this application, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Uh, there's no one at this time. Okay, very well. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Dickey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Based on my review of the owner's application and the site plan, uh, together with my uh, site visit and the, absence of, or the, the neighbor's comment and the presentation by the town planner, it's my opinion that this variance is minor in nature and conforms to the test under the Planning Act. And I would like to put forth a motion to uh, approve this variance subject to the condition that the uncovered stair below grade accessing the main building be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawing dated August 2nd, 2023, and they, that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision. The building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dickey. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Seeing none, all those in support. Okay, your application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, so we have application CV074 of 2023 at 15 Pebble Ridge Place. Again, that's CV074. 7 4 of 2023 at 15 Pebble Ridge Place. It was deferred from October the 18th. So I have three emails of opposition from an R. Saunders and Adele Alali and a Nasij Limited. Um, I have the agent as Jim Pfeffer. Uh, yes, I've moved him into the meeting. Very well. Thank you.
Good evening. Can you bring up the presentation material, please? Thank you very much. <clears throat> so I will point out that the letters of opposition, none of them are, to the best of my knowledge, to neighbors to this property. The owner is in a group with the other homeowners in the subdivision. Uh, he shared the plans and no one in the neighborhood has objected to what we're proposing. In this front elevation that's in front of you, I want to point out three things. One is that central upper roof. That is the roof for which we're requesting a height variance. We're requesting a variance at exactly the same height as the roof immediately across the street, which this committee approved with staff support a couple of months ago. And that roof actually was much more extensive in area. These other roofs step down to the sides and that's exactly what the livable oak build guidelines ask us to do step down the massing towards the perimeter of the lot. On the right hand side, you'll see a patch of lawn. Underneath that patch of lawn, <clears throat> we have a small extension of the basement. And that's what we're asking for a side yard setback for. All of the building above grade meets the required setbacks. The other thing I'd like the committee to note is that this, build, this lot is actually three and a half meters less wide than a typical lot in this subdivision at the front yard setback because it's kind of a reverse pie shape tapers towards the front. So this front facade actually appears narrower than many homes in this subdivision and consequently it actually presents as being a little bit smaller, not larger. On the next page, you'll see this house and the house across the street on the plan of the subdivision to scale. And you can see there this committee granted that house a side yard setback variance to a two-story portion of the house. You can see where we're asking that setback to the basement. On the next page, you'll see those two houses again, two scale on the next page, and you'll see how our house gets on the, our house gets the same height variance, but it's a meet, half a meter lower because of the topography of the site. So we don't go to the same spot. There you can see in the image, the west side of the lot, extensive screening of trees, no one on that side is going to be affected by anything in this property. And you can see at the rear how the land falls away quite sharply towards Lake Ontario. The next page is probably going to be, you'll see what I was talking about. On the next page, you'll see, um, is this the presentation I sent in yet, the other day? This doesn't seem to be the, what I sent into the committee. Hello? Madam Secretary. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just checking. Okay. <clears throat> and what day did you send it in? This was sent in, uh, unfortunately, I think yesterday. Uh, and there was one that included a rendering of the rear of the property. There was nothing received yesterday. This is actually the presentation that was um, to go to the October um, 18th oh, when yeah. it's deferred for signage. I didn't receive another one. If you send it to me really quickly, I'll be able to post it. Okay. Yeah, this was sent to you yesterday in the, yeah, but I'll send it right now. Was it sent to my personal one or to the COA it request? Was COA request. Well, I don't know why I didn't get it. You can send it to either one and, and I'll, I'll, if we can, if the committee doesn't mind bearing with us a moment and then I'll, then I'll get the, I'll upload it for the IT people. Yeah, I appreciate the committee's patience on this. Uh, this material in part addresses some of what was raised by the, the planning uh, report. So I'd, I, I would like you to see it. No problem, we'll wait. And I'm not, I, oh, wow, it's 16 megabytes. Is that a problem for you? I don't know if, uh, if, if, it, if it's coming that it didn't get to me, then I'm assuming yes. Maybe that's why I didn't get it. And I, I guess I can't, I can't share my screen here. Uh, no, we don't have any sh uh, screen sharing. 
Did oh. you attempt sending it again right now? Uh, I did. It Has seems it to be too back? large for um, Just... our system to accept me. That's probably why I didn't get it yesterday. But you should have got a bounce back saying that I didn't get it. Yeah. Um... Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Um. If the, if you have if you have one slide or one picture that you'd like to show, maybe perhaps sending that separately instead of oh, the yeah, entire presentation. Uh, why don't I do that right now? I really appreciate your patience on this. Uh, let me. Just... Uh, whoa. Uh, hold on. I'm sorry. I really thank you very much. So. Okay, hopefully that'll get through to you. And you, and you sent it to my personal one, right? Uh, yeah, I sent it both. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, and it's it's definitely de less than ten megabytes, so it should certainly come through. Heather, can you confirm if it's gone through, or we're still waiting for? No, I'm mode. still waiting. I haven't received anything. So, you know, if you want, while we wait here, I can talk just a uh, couple of things in the, in the pages that you have, on the next couple of pages that you have, and I'll see if what I had sent comes through. We can only hope. Oh, okay, go ahead. So on the next page, what I'll, I'll send through, um, this project had to go through site plan approval because the owner got it in 2019 uh, when site plan approval was still in effect. And because of that, we had to get the civil engineer for the subdivision to review the grading for this property. And so submitted as part of this application is a grading plan prepared by that civil engineer, which certifies that the grading for this lot complies with the lot grading for the subdivision. And we worked very hard with them. It wasn't just a stamp that he put on. I mean, we worked hard with them to make sure that the swales, everything worked um, with the grading for the subdivision. Um, the staff 
in their report, they take umbrage with the fact that there's a retaining wall on the side lot line. That retaining wall was put there by the developer at the request of the town to raise the grade on this property because in the fifth submission of the servicing plan for this subdivision, the city requested that the sanitary lines be raised at this part of the subdivision. And the staff also says our first floor is too high. But we have a basement, which is not a high basement. It's got nine foot ceilings, which is not high in contemporary development. And we've had to put the ground floor where it is so we don't need a sewage ejector pump to eject from the basement. So that is what's setting our ground floor height. The fact that the town made changes to the servicing of the subdivision. The town put that retaining wall there and the town raised the grading of this lot. If in the presentation material that you had had, you'll see a version of our site plan. And what you'll see is the lot coverage for this house above grade is 21%, whereas 25% is permitted. We don't need a GFA variance. What is driving our length variance entirely and our coverage variance entirely is an area of basement behind the above grade portion of the house. You'll see this, you could bring up that part of the site plan that you actually have. Um, that area behind the house would be built up as rear yard amenity area anyways, and it isn't visible from the lots to the side, it isn't visible to the back, there's no impact to that one of these, you know, four variances we're re requesting. And if you take a look again, if you had that uh, booklet, even the, the one I sent in for the October hearing, the very last page, you'll see elevations of all of the other houses that this committee, uh, oh yeah, here we go. So there's the subdivision. So here you, on this, this was from the October hearing, but you'll see, Here's all these other houses in this subdivision that this committee has approved. And you can see they have high roof lines, extensive roofs, you know, that go through most of the width of the building. And then on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see what I'm proposing. And it's a narrower building. The roofs step back to the side. We've really made an effort to articulate the mass, to follow what the livable design guidelines call for. The variances we're asking for really don't have an impact. Um, I'm sorry about the breakup in the presentation here. I'm really happy to in, ask, uh, take any questions, but we really worked hard to make this a project which is gonna be an ornament to the neighborhood and which, which is not going to have a negative impact, but rather will have a positive impact on this subdivision. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pepper. Are there any questions, items of clarification? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll just start with uh, clarity on the height variance across the road. That was actually more of a technical variance because of the corner lot scenario where the height complied from the frontage but didn't comply from the uh, flankage, which dropped away. So that was a, a different scenario than this one. But um, if I can ask a multi part uh, question. So if, if I understood your presentation correctly, the side yard variance is all below grade. Correct. So it has no impact to above grade separation distance, access to the rear or drainage. Is that correct. correct? That is absolutely correct. Okay. And the roof that we talked about, you're only looking for the center portion, not the entire roof. That is correct. So then can you just for clarity explain exactly what the dwelling depth is being measured to? Because it looks like the house itself is in the 20 meter range, but because of the, I'm assuming it's the elevated pool um, is giving you the increased depth. And in addition to that, if you could explain exactly what is being included in the lot coverage. Okay. Yeah, so if you bring up that site plan that I did have in the presentation material, um, it, it does illustrate exactly, uh, so it's a page I think or two before this, or so page after this. Yeah, right there. 
So you can see, okay, so we're saying, you know, the length of this house, you know, minus the front porch and that little extension right in the middle of the back is less than 20 meters, 19.6. Now behind the house, you can see that there's that area which is kind of shaded. It goes uh, both to the, to the up top of this plan, I guess the east, and then to the bottom, to the west. So all of that is basement area. Now, this is basement area. Part of it has a green roof on it. We've actually researched some you know, great green roof products, which are actually more absorptive than lawn. And part of it is pool terrace. And all of this would be built up in any case for an owner of this, by an owner of this lot to have, you know, an at grade rear yard amenity space behind the house. So the depth, you can see where it's measured. It's that is that 37.26 uh, meters that goes slightly at the diagonal to the axis of the lot that goes from the front of the front porch to the very back of that basement, which is underneath this platform. And then that sort of shaded gray area, that all counts as coverage because it's all got basement below it. I'm sorry to interrupt. The house itself no. above no. gray, that's that white area in the center. Sorry, we just I just received whatever you sent. I don't know whether that will help with this part or no. Yeah, it will. If you can actually, there's a page there that shows a rendering of the rear okay. of the property. Sorry to and interrupt. I, I just thought if whatever you sent me might help better with your explanation. Oh, yeah, I really appreciate it. That's the speed of the internet. We're uh, moving faster than the internet tonight. <laughs> so... This, is, this will be very helpful, this rendering of the rear, because it shows both the way that the massing of the house really considerably steps away at all sides. Oh yeah, there it is. So you can see that upper left-hand corner, there's that upper roof, but you can see, you know, particularly at the back, you know, here, and I put this in because staff said, oh, we've got open to below areas which push out the second floor walls. Those open to below areas, those are highlighted in the plan in the bottom left, but you can see in the rear rendering, they have like an eave line at the second floor floor level and they don't even go up to the second floor ceiling. Those are really stepping down on all sides in the center, on the west side, just a single story part of the building. So we really step down the mass. And then here you can see, you know, this is an estate lot. It's, you know, this, these are these R1-0 lots they, these are substantial lots for substantial homes. This one goes straight out to the lake. There's nothing behind it. So you can expect an owner here to want to have a rear yard amenity space. You can see it in the rendering. It's going to be beautiful. There's a basement below it. That's what we're asking for. But just a follow-up then. So looking at the pool, the walkways, and the garden, that's all included in your coverage calculation. That's correct. And it's all that area is hatched in that site plan we had included in both our last and this presentation. Any further questions or items of clarification? Go ahead, Mr. Kloski. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just uh, wanted to ask staff if, um, given Mr. Pfeiffer's uh, explanation, whether their opinion is swayed in any way. And maybe in, I, I would note uh, the staff report talks about the impasse of massing on the streetscape, but um, the uh, streetscape drawing that Mr. Pfeiffer showed um, seemed to suggest that this building may have the least impact on the streetscape compared to other variances that this committee's already approved. Yes, thank you for you, Madam Chair. Um, staff completed a review of the application materials and specifically looked at the variances proposed against four tests of the Planning Act. And we feel the cumulative impact of the proposed variances may create negative undue impacts. Um, we're of the opinion that the proposed variances do clearly exemplify an overbuild of the subject property, 
property. And although some of the variances relate to area underground, staff has concerns that the proposal seems to be altering the grades of the proposed or of the property to accommodate the dwelling. Um, I understand that a grading plan was submitted. However, that does not seem to align with the grading plan approved through the plan of subdivision. And so that is where some concerns are raised with regards to the grading of the site. So at this point in time, staff's opinion does remain that um, the application at hand does not meet the four tests of a minor variance. If I could maybe speak directly to that, in this latest booklet that you, you just received, if you could take a look at the second page there, I'd really appreciate it. So you can see, number one, I've highlighted on that, the date. And that date of this grading plan by the engineer for the subdivision is February 27th, 2023. So that's after all of the work was done and this was fully approved and, compl and completed by the town. So, and it says, this certifies that the proposed, proposed grades at the lot corners are correct, that the lot grading the subject lot is in general conformity to the approved subdivision grading plan. Now on the next page, if you can go to the next page, please, this is what happened to our client. Our client bought this property in 2019 before there was a plan of subdivision approved. And there, you know, you can see this upper plan, which was issued for the third submission by the developer back in 2021. And you can see that highlighted number on that upper plan is, 85.54 meters. And that's supposed to be the geodetic elevation that his basement is not supposed to go below. Now, on the bottom, you can see this plan as constructed from July, 2022. And what you'll see there is that the elevation that our my client's basement is not supposed to go below is 84.70. So it's actually gone up or, you know, considerably. And you can see highlighted there is that armor stone retaining wall. Now staff says, and you can see it in bold text, you know, the applicant's overall design approach appears to attempt to re-engineer this property to suit the dwelling design. This is exemplified by over four foot increase between the proposed finished floor elevation and established grade, as well as the retaining walls in this on-constructed plan, which are up to 0 0.7 meters in height that artificially manipulate the grades of the site. That retaining wall was put there by the developer at the request of this town, so the, so the town could have, you know, could basically take the sanitary at a slope all the way out to Lakeshore Road West, whereas before it had gone, I think, over to Shorncliffe Road. So the town decided to change its sanitary drainage pattern for this site. The town made it so this, this property had to rise up. And then our client had to have a, you know, basically raise the first floor to not an extraordinary height above the, 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 the ground, but they had to do it so they didn't have to pump their sewage out of the basement. That's why. We worked with the civil engineer to pick a point that would still be able to drain by gravity the basement sanitary to the street. That's why we are where we are. We haven't manipulated the grades to make a higher house. And this house, I mean, when I, I showed that drawing of this house and the house across the street, that's apples to apples. This house, the established grade is apples to apples, 0.45 meters below that house across the street. So apples to apples, we are 0.5 meters lower than that house. Thank you, Mr. Fath. Um, Ms. McKnight, there seems to be a disconnect here with the planning and the town staff. So where do we go from here? Through you, Madam Chair, yes. Um, my, my understanding through our discussions is that the grading plans do not align. Um, I do recognize that town staff did previously approve of a retaining wall and we're in support of a retaining wall. At this point, I believe 
Um, the request is mainly simply to offset the retaining wall from the property line. That would the retaining wall is built. You know, that was built as part of the plan of subdivision that this town already approved. It's there, it's, it's a fact on the ground. And we were actually worked with the engineer to cut it back a little bit to accommodate the circular drive, which we removed from this application because planning objected to this the circular drive that we had had. But now it's, it is gonna remain where it is in fact right now. Mr. Harkas, I saw your hand go up. Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I'm seeing two retaining walls on on this th this drawing. There's the one on the west side, and then there's an, uh, one on the east side of the building uh, that extends from the walkway towards the back. And there's a, a grade differential from the top of that retaining wall to the bottom of that retaining wall as well that it seems to be that 0.7 meters. Ah, so so, uh, so so just 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 a, just a moment. Yeah. So you've got a retaining wall on the west side, a very very large footprint of a building because in order to avoid a grinder pump or ejection pump, and and, and to accommodate your client's basement re request for height. Um, you've got a big footprint that you've got to make fit now on, on a piece of land that, that, that changes elevation. So you've got retaining walls on both sides. Yeah, the, the retaining wall on the east side, you know, you can see the dimension, it's set back 1.3 meters at the very least, and then in another spot, you know, 2.6 meters from the side property line. Um, you know, basically the, the whole property does slope down towards the lake. Uh, we have, you know, at the back, we walk out on grade, but we're retaining the grade at that rear yard amenity space. But, you know, that isn't uh, going to have a negative impact either on the property to the west or the east. And, and it's something that would be built as landscaping one way or the other, you know whether there was basement under it and it counted as coverage or whether there wasn't. I mean, this owner I think would want just to have that, you know, level rear yard amenity space. So just just to, to carry on to my point, it, the, the, the existence of that basement though, is in fact driving the need to have a retaining wall. He could choose, the, the owner could choose to do something, but it is in fact a requirement to have some kind of a grade different um, dividing piece on the, on the east side of this property where, to recognize that you're carrying a slope back into an area that naturally, or sorry, you're, you're carrying a, a, a grade back into the rear portion of the property uh, that naturally slopes down uh, to the south and to the east. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're we're basically, you know, maintaining the the plan of subdivision grades for this property along the entire east property line. And we're doing it at such a width that it is not at all going to impact, you know, the way that the drainage for this lot was designed, you know, basically to drain towards Lake Ontario but results in a visual um, presence of a retaining wall. Not there will be, I mean, yeah, if you walk beside there, you'll see a retaining wall, absolutely. It's, it's part of the plan and it's, it does, um, you know, we, it, that retaining wall does not come up to the grade of the deck. I think basically we've done it in a couple of steps. So, and, and you know, where you see it set back from the platform, it can be, it, you know, planted to create a kind of a softer appearance, I guess. We, we, you know, we've worked really hard on this design and, um, yeah. And, and we tried to take, you know, everything into account. Anything further from the members? 
Mr. Dickey, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a uh, question to the town planner. I, I read your report. You seem to make no mention of the fact that the, the excess in the dwelling depth is a basement structure. Um, why didn't you mention that? And were you aware of that? Yes, for you, Madam Chair, we are aware that the excess in dwelling depth is related to the basement structure. Um, now, although they are related, again, I would speak to the fact that the cumulative effect of all variances um, do result in planning staff's opinion that the, that the application is not supportable. And as well, the impact of the differing grading plans. So the fact that the grading plan submitted with the application does not align with the grading plan for the plan of subdivision. Um, that does raise some concerns and the, the basement addition um, does play a role in that impact. So that is why we do not support the dwelling depth proposed. Uh, uh, just to be clear for the committee members, it, typically, when you submit an application to the Committee of Adjustment, you would submit a topographical survey. And in this case, in, there was no topographical survey because the, you know, because the whole thing was being redeveloped by this developer. So what I think everyone in this subdivision has done has submitted the developer's, the, the developer's subdivision grading plan. So that's what we did because this property owner has had this for so long, we must have just sent in the one from before. But, but that's essentially like saying we submitted an old survey. The fact is the grading that was done by the civil engineer for the subdivision for this lot reflects the final grading that was built and approved by the town. The, you know, the, and maybe, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Riley, but, when you say the subdivision, the, the grading plan for the subdivision, you're basically talking about that. What we submitted as the survey, not anything to do with anything that we've designed for this house. Yes, so we're speaking to um, within the submission, within the application submission, there is drawing number A100, that's a site and grading plan, site and grading plan and site statistics that we're speaking to. Mr. Pepper, I recognize that your application was already deferred because of signage issues, but knowing that there were these indiscrepancies that the town saw versus what you see, why did you not take the deferral and have another sit down with the town to iron out where everyone stood, whether it be development engineering or the town inspectors, and then come to the committee? It's not up to us to figure out who's on the right side of this. Yeah, the, who the, built the retaining wall first? Who built the retaining, who asked for the retaining wall? We are not privy for, to all of that. And Heather can verify for me that I sent in a, you know, a long commentary on the last planning report that was received for the October hearing, addressing the issue of the retaining wall, addressing a lot of these issues. And I got no response at all for planning. And I have tried to meet with planning in advance of the hearing and planning has refused to have a meeting outright. And in turn, and bring up, hey, hold on, bring up, uh, bring up on. page. Bring they up refused page the first time or the second time? Both times. With the second time, just recently, like after the last hearing, the day after the last hearing, I sent a long correspondence into the committee. Heather can verify that. And also, if you take a look at page A100, I defy you to show me what's wrong about that plan. Like it, it's. Uh, yeah. Riley, did did the applicant reach out to speak to you with respect to that deferral and having discussion on the comments and why was there no meeting set? Yes, through you, Madam Chair, staff did receive an email um, from Mr. Peffer following the October meeting. Um, the email contained. Um, the, the email contained a response to staff's previous comments. 
the response is more in keeping with justifying the application proposal and not requesting feedback or further discussions be had. And so um, we took them as comments from the applicant and reviewed them and tried to compare our review against the applicant's review, um, but they were held as justification for the previous proposal and the continuing of that. And so we took those as comments rather than a request for a meeting. Okay. Uh, um, I'm I'm not going to be the principal between the two. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't do that. I, I refuse. Um, members, um, Look, I I'm going to I'm going to um, I I'm not comfortable uh, dealing with this application, not knowing full fact where we stand in terms of the plans, the the subdivisions, how things transpired until now. But um, uh, it's in your hands where we go from here. Any further questions? For items of clarification, Mr. Dickey. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I this is the first time I've heard about all this retaining wall. If the uh, agent had written a presentation and submitted it two weeks ago, I'd be more aware of this. What I am concerned with is the depth of the building and the mass and scale that that depth brings about. So I go, I would like to ask the town planner, how can a building that is just a basement structure have mass and scale that would negatively impact the adjacent property? The question to the town planner. Yes, through you, Madam Chair, the mass and scale, um, the increase in mass and scale is a result of not only the building, the dwelling depth, but the height, the increase in height, um, the interior side yard setback is to be reduced and the increase in lot coverage. So it is the cumulative impact of all four variances rather than simply just the dwelling depth that we are reviewing. Can I just bring out one thing and then I'll leave it. Recently, oh, sorry. Recently, we had two properties on Balsam Avenue. Number 283 and number 167 were going for additional debt. In their instances, the additional debt depth had a two story structure, plus a part, part was a one story structure, and the town planning or the town's position was okay. So I cannot understand why the town's permission or on this dwelling depth, which is a basement structure, is the town's position is to object to that. I understand what you're saying about, about the height. I understand what you're saying about the side yard setback, but you didn't mention in, in your report anything about the basement structure. So your whole report to me, you haven't covered it. So, and, and when you compare it to what was said at Balsam, it's just inconsistent. So you don't have to answer that. I'm just making a point that there's, just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Any further comments or items of clarification? Okay, how about we take the matter into committee? Uh, has anyone called with um, to speak to this application, Madam Secretary? Is anyone uh, in the attendance who's raised their hand? Uh, there's no one at this time. Okay. And we will take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Dickey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Based upon my review of the owner's application, site plans, building elevations in my site visit, together with the presentation by the planner, my opinion that this uh, application um, complies with the Four Test Planning Act, and therefore I put forth a motion that the application be approved, subject to 
Um, let me just a minute. Subject to the site plan, it, or in accordance with the site plans dated, oh, the site plans and elevation drawings dated September 5th, 2023, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if the building permit is not being issued for the proposed construction. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dickey. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I gotta say, I'm always concerned when we have applicants state that they asked to meet with staff and were refused. Um, having said that, uh, regardless of what this committee does tonight, I'm pretty sure somebody's taken this to the OLT. Personally, I don't think staff and the applicant should be as far apart as it seems. Um, Madam Chair, when I, I look at this, um, I, I definitely take Mr. Dickey's point. Um, staff have supported above grade uh, significant increases in building depth and aren't supporting below grade. I uh, find that uh, a little inconsistent. With respect to the height, um, again, as I said earlier, I remember the house across the way and the road drops off in the direction of this property. So I fully believe that uh, Mr. Pfeffer is correct when even though it's a height variance on this one, it's not going to be as high as the house across the street when you compare the two houses um, right in front of each other. Uh, similarly, I don't quite understand the staff report um, when they don't support the side yard variance because it impacts operation distance and drainage, yet the side yard variance is fully below grade. Uh, I'm gonna support Mr. Dickey. I don't understand um, staff's objection here and uh, well, let's hope they can work it out regardless of what the committee does. Very well, thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Okay, the uh, the motion before us is to approve the, the application subject to the two standard conditions, uh, site plan and elevation dated September 25th, 2023. And, uh, Sorry, 25th or 5th? I thought Mr. Dickey said September 25th, 2023 is what I wrote. No, September 5th. 05, right? Sorry, I, I, so I just want to make sure I have it right. And I heard zero. I heard the fifth. Uh, thank thank you. you. So it's the yeah, fifth. Yeah, I, I heard twenty fifth, Mr. Dickey. It, it is, is the fifth. fifth. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, all those in support. All those opposed. Okay. The app. Uh, Miss Yu, were you opposed or or you were opposed or? or support support sorry you didn't see my okay. hand so yeah no um okay so the application has been approved uh one opposed have thank a you. good night thank you very much for such a deliberative hearing i really appreciate your time have a good night um Okay, uh, I think that was the last item on our agenda. Um, you have confirmation of minutes for November the 1st. The Hart Castle, thank you. And then we have a motion to adjourn. Um, thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. I was got sidetracked for a second looking at the watch at 9.36 p.m. Will you let us know when we're offline, please?